Uh, hello, uh, welcome everybody uh, to our online launch on diversity and inclusion in the music industry. Uh, today, Tuesday, 22nd November, uh, 2022. It's 11 o'clock and we start. I start, um, it's my pleasure to welcome you. Uh, also, um, I like to say um, welcome, especially to Marc Dumoulin. It's uh, very important for us. <laughs> uh, also to our speakers who will give contribution to the panel discussion. It is Delphine uh, Jean Pielis, from Union uh, Nationale des Auteurs et Compositeurs uh, France, uh, Irina Karamarkovic uh, from Migrants uh, Advisory Council in the city of Graz, Austria, uh, Rebecca Ferguson from Ivers Academy in United Kingdom, also the uh, main moderator, Catherine Deventer from European Festival Association, also, the moderators from the breakout rooms, Sarah Glennan from Ireland, Sine Topte Hannibal from Denmark, and Afke Romling from Netherlands. And the last but not at least, <laughs> uh, it is Tatiana, Anastasia, and Claire from EXA, who uh, really made possible uh, this launch. Uh, thank you. Uh, all uh, three and all other from uh, EXA uh, for your patience, for your uh, support, technical and also uh, not only technical, also with your advice, administration, great administration and professional support in um, our motivation to, to, to uh, become true. So uh, our group, this uh, new group uh, is, um, uh, has the intention, intention to move forward, to follow and to develop the great job done by the Gender and Equality Group, um, who this working group uh, set in 2016 as Working Group in Gender and Equality, and then uh, is extended to Diversity and um, Inclusion Group. So, uh, played the key ro role in raising awareness and promote measures to equality in the Alliance and its members, in, not only uh, in EXA, following the EXA members' feedbacks and suggestions. Uh, the working group has decided to support the planning of capacity building events. So we uh, make some selection of topics, speakers and ment mentors with the support of EXA to reach out uh, the music business and uh, to help the career and development of female composers. Um, so now we have more uh, topics. We speak about uh, diversity, we speak about uh, inclusion, uh, also in case not only gender, but also about age, ethnical, national, and also background, legitimacy uh, and uh, other things of diversity and uh, inclusion. Uh, we have and we're planning to have uh, regular video calls and um, we will present uh, all these outcomes in the learning launch in occasion of our EXA meetings when they are live or online. Uh, by, our, by our initiative, uh, EXA will put in place several events related to diversity and inclusion in the music business. And so like this, we uh, hope to be very efficacious. Uh, we are trying to collect, we are planning also to collect the best practice and learn from each other in all our lo local, respective local music lives. Uh, so, uh we just start <laughs> with this launch today we are planning to keep informed and collaborate to similar association over the over the world um, specific models from french and italian practices they are most uh, advanced and most developed uh, uh, in this um, direction about diversity, we are we will take some um, back practice, uh, best practices from uh, United States. 
uh, we keep informed and collect also topics related to all kinds of inclusion and diversity. We will make uh, research about age, ethical, national diversity and inclusion. We keep looking at some new phenomena related to the technological development. Uh, also, uh, there are coming some inequalities about uh, in this situation. We have uh, the new phenomenon of imposters also we should uh, uh, keep in mind. Uh, we will analyze challenges, we will collect and disseminate inclusion best practices and provide knowledge and recommendation and address um, all inclusion matters in the EXA network and uh, uh, all the music sector. Uh, our actual members are Avke Romelin from uh, Netherlands, Rebecca Ferguson from the Ivors Academy, Zara Mani from Austrian Composer Association. She is also vice president of EXA. Uh, Albena Petrovic, me, <laughs> from uh, Federation Luxembourgeoise de Auteur et Compositeur de Luxembourg. Uh, Beatrice uh, Thiers is the uh, same France. Uh, Kiki Arvala from Society of Finnish Composers, Elizabeth Anderson from Belgium, Natalia Vergara from Spain, Emily Saunders from Ivers Academy, and Sarah Glennon from Screen Composers in Ireland. So we have this launch today. Uh, we are planning also uh, to make, have a mentoring program for female, female composers. Uh, EXA will organize a mentoring program for young female composers and songwriters together with Association of European Conservatoire in the framework of the initiative Support Emerging Female Artists, which includes also another mentoring program developed in collaboration with the European Jazz Network. Uh, this um, program will help female composers, female music authors also, not only composers, um, at the beginning of their career to develop and also these leadership skills, not only professional, and will improve them to overcome role stereotypes and deal with, with power relations. Uh, we will uh, identify six mentors. Uh, so, music creators and six mentees uh, from their network coming from over the Europe. And um, these individual meetings will help the mentees uh, to um, um, uh, provide a better uh, career development. So uh, now I present the aim of our uh, event today, why we are here. We are here to open this online launch on inclusion and diversity. And through this activity, uh, EXA members and the public will have the possibility of exchanging on spe specific challenges related to diversity, inclusion, gender balance in the uh, industry. Uh, uh, like a music gender definition, quota of affirmative actions, diversity and uh, female role models examples of charters, guidelines on diversity, inclusion, sexual harassment and academic world, how to apply the gender equality in careers with non-traditional working conditions, um, etc. Uh, this would allow the participants uh, and seek the inspiration from each other to find solution to this issue and overcome barriers to equality and inclusiveness in the sector. Uh, everybody from um, moderators and uh, also for speakers uh, will explain his own, um, own uh, practices and on uh, uh, yes. And uh, uh, we have this panel discussion on the theme of gender and diversity inclusion in the music business. Uh, the event will be held in the online format because uh, it's the only way for us, <laughs> uh, but it gives possibility to uh, many uh, people to participate, what will be not possible if we do uh, uh, live. So uh, we try to find uh, diverse perspective and we try to 
look from each side um, our uh, different experiences. So I, um, this introduction was not too short, but I try to say more as possible. Now it's my great pleasure to welcome Catherine Deventer, the Secretary General of the European Festival Association to moderate our panel. So I give the floor to Catherine. Thank you very much, Albina, and it's a great pleasure for me to meet you all. Yes, Sarah, good applause to you for this introduction. I think so many topics have already been mentioned. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I have the pleasure to moderate this 40 minutes uh, panel ahead of us now. Uh, I'm the head of the European Festivals Association, and I was just thinking, listening to you, to introduce myself very briefly by saying that I was 29 when I took over the head uh, of the European Festivals Association's Secretariat. I was the first woman uh, in a 70 year long history of this network of arts festivals. I was definitely the first one under 30 at that time. And I was facing a board at that time that was purely male uh, in IFA. And I was uh, looking at a history of IFA that until the 90s had a women's program for the general assemblies where all the men came together to discuss the programs and the programming of the festivals for the next years and the women could go out and have some swimming and shopping and this kind of stuff and i can tell you i'm not laughing about it in a way that i don't appreciate that because a lot of many important things have happened in the 50s in the 60s in the 70s and so forth i'm looking at the history of IFA with great appreciation but times change of course and in a way i i applaud the courage of the european festivals association's board at that time to give this task to lead a network to a 29 year old young lady that hasn't seen an excel file before i took over this position but i learned quickly Many things changed, and I think since the last 20 years that I'm leading and running IFA, uh, I could be in that time of change, and I could have a good eye on the uh, and the attention to many issues regarding inclusion, equality, and equity. But of course, the gender issue and the age issue is just one element. It's such a complex, complex topic, not just in the music industry, but in society, in the world as such that we are living in. And we all agree, I'm sure, that we cannot permit ourselves these days anymore to live in our societies and do things without looking at those topics uh, that you mentioned before. We have this panel. I'm just here to moderate and kick out three questions to these panelists. And luckily, I don't need to have the expertise on all that. I have my own experience. The panel was already introduced, but I will very briefly do this again. We have with us Delphine, musician, music composer. I think actually you know each other, but I wanted to read this out to you because I think it's impressive, our panel. She's president of the Commission for Equality Between Women and Men at Sacken, co-president of Collective Troisième Autrice, a French film music, women composers association, and member of the board of UNAC in France. Then we have with us, Irina Karamarkovic, she is musician as well, performer, composer and author. She is the chairwoman of the Migrants Advisory Council of the City of Graz and in the EG Women's Action Forum. And last but not least, we have with us Rebecca Ferguson. She's a British songwriter who came to prominence, it says, in 2010 when she became the runner up of the seventh series of The X Factor. I'm sure you have been introduced with this line many, many times, Rebecca. She has performed perform with great names in the industry, such as Lionel, Lionel, Lionel Richie, Andrea Bocelli, and many, many others. And you have been, Rebecca, campaigning hard for an improved environment within the music industry in many, many different ways. So I'm very happy to have you with us. I will not talk for you about your experience. I will give you immediately for a very short, brief uh, first round the floor, first to you, Delphine. Uh, what is your take on the topic of inclusion and uh, where do you come from? Just very, very briefly introduce okay. yourself. So hello, everybody. Um, to introduce myself, I'd say I am a guitar player. I am an autodidact and I come from the rock world. So um, and I'm not that young. So when I started in the mid 80s, I can tell you there was not many women guitar players on stage. And I was basically 
in a man's world. But uh, back then, I didn't ask myself too many questions. And it was sort of, um, I don't think I really suffered from that back then. And um, just to go fast, when, um, anyway, I had a, a, a career, I managed to do it in this man's world. But when COVID happened, as it all slowed down, I was asked to join the SASEM, this new um, Commission for Gender Equity, and the UNAC board. And I said yes to everything. I had time. And then, little by little, I realized um, that it was I had a lot to transmit and a lot to experience to share. And I had all my background and my experience to um, that was clicking into this because I, you know, we are into the middle of a big social change and it just um it, it, i just um realized that was my place even if i felt not very legitimate at first to be in there mm -hmm. to be brief but i i'll develop after so i come from this background great i will give you the floor after we introduce each other again in order to learn more from your experience uh, that you made in your parcours irina mm -hmm. can i give you the floor and uh, ask you to share also your take on the question of inclusion in two minutes. Mute it. You, you still have to mute yourself. It's the same game for three years. Yes. Uh, so good day, everybody. Um, sorry for my muting, but um, I kind of got sick. So I, I, I'm trying uh, you not to hear my coughing. So I come from Kosovo. Uh, back then it was Yugoslavia, ethnically mixed, um, uh, many citizenships, um, active um, as a musician, author, composer, band leader, um, and, and in cultural politics as well. Um, well, um, I came uh, uh, from uh, from Kosovo to Graz back then because there were no academic institutions to study jazz or improvised music or popular music. And Graz has um, the oldest jazz department um, in Europe. It's almost 58 years old. So I ran away from my very, very classical family because uh, with uh, Czerny and with these kind of attitudes toward uh, musical education, um, as I talked to Delphine the other day, it was uh, not really possible to do um, uh, anything um, else, to, to play anything else. So back then I, I came to Graz, it was um, 1997. And uh, as I like to say, my washing machine is still in Graz. <laughs> and um, I tend to say washing machine um, home is where you're washing machine is especially for the musicians because we are nomads <laughs> um, and this as far as inclusion is concerned so this is a huge topic I'm um, I'm not going to say much about my work but it's very political um, it considers a lot topics as um, uh, as migration uh, war being forced to go um, somewhere um, and uh, and it is very um, feminist because the uh, jazz department, the whole jazz scene, the whole jazz history, um, let me put it like this, and not only jazz, um, you have uh, very, very few um, women, basically, still, uh, who are not vocalists, hmm. which I am, uh, by the way, but, um, but I think we need to provide them um, with more conditions, with better conditions to, to do their work and to and to decide at all they want to um, they want to do this professionally. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So this is like cool. Thanks, Irina. I come back to you. You mentioned many things already. Eh? I mean, we come back to the gender thing. We also four female people speaking now. At least. Uh, uh, obviously, female people now uh, speaking in this panel, which might not be <laughs> representing the diversity as such, but or the equity, let's or the equity maybe, but not the equality uh, as such. But uh, you spoke about citizenship, cultural diversity, the artistic diversity you personally come from, and also the political stances that we have to take. Many things, I think, in the second round to come back to. Rebecca, let me introduce or let me give you the floor to introduce yourself as well. Uh, and your kind of well interest or take on the stand on the situation of inclusion. Hi, so I'm Rebecca Ferguson from the UK, and I've been singing 
and writing songs since I was a little girl, but I started professionally creating music about 13 years ago. Um, and my experience within the music industry was, if I'm being plainly honest, and I've been very vocal about this, was quite horrific. And I believe it was because of the lack of diversity, uh, mainly in the UK, a lot of the powerful figures are male. And there was a lack of regulation and a lack of standards as well in the UK. And I'm, I'm, I know that um, one of the reasons why I wanted to join EXA is I've been working with the UK government to create an independent standards authority that sets standards, sets a code of conduct. Um, so that organisations know, OK, this is how we should be behaving. Um, and so, to be honest, all I ever wanted to be was a singer that was it I, I lived it I breathed it music was my thing and then I accidentally ended up in this situation and again it comes back to Covid where we had time we all had time to think and I sat there and I was thinking about music the music industry about my career and I thought this is unacceptable like this is not okay and I reflected on my experience through music and I just thought well what can I do to make sure that other people entering the music industry are not having to go through what I went through and so I've pretty much although I still sing I still do the odd show I've pretty much dedicated my time now as well as raising my gang of children <laughs> um to um to try and create a safer um more diverse um music industry so yeah that's a little bit about me and where I'm at at the moment thank you Thank you, Rebecca. And it's interesting really to see in all of your profiles and what unites you and, and maybe many of you here in this group is, is that there is not only the willingness and the wish to express yourself as an artist, but there is also a strong readiness to engage on a meta level, on a collective level, on an organized civil society level into such a thing as what I would call a political dialogue. I mean, Irina, you are even sitting on the advisory council of the city of Graz, which is a lot of political work and expertise that you need to inquire in a way in order to have a say and an informed take on the situation from your very personal experience. And I think this is what I would love to speak about now in the second round. How do you make in your, in your life as an artist, of course, how do you take a responsible act or actions uh, on this topic, on this very complex topic of, uh, of inclusion and of all the different kinds of sets of rights that you want to tackle and you want to have an impact on Mm -hmm. uh, you have different organizations, you founded different organizations, you are in boards of different organizations, I guess, to have a say and a take and to lead to some sort of change and mm -hmm. awareness, probably. Can I start with you, Delphine, again, and then we go again through Irina sure. and then to Rebecca. Um, it's a very vast question. And um, uh, maybe I go back a bit on my trajectory. And um, when, so I come from the men, you know, in the 80s, 90s, it was uh, as a rock guitar player, imagine. But then <clears throat> I had babies too. And uh, so I stopped for a while and because I really wanted to embrace mother, motherhood, you know, it was very important to me. But I was very lucky because um, a few years after my kids were uh, not babies, I got hired for a tour, a big tour by a woman uh, composer, singer that had seen me on stage back then and that uh, liked me so we went touring for um, two years and she had put on an old female band so i made a new uh, network of young female musician artists and this really gave me a kick and made me understand that um, i had been missing a lot when i was uh, alone surrounded by men i realized with all the women around me it was very different than to be surrounded by men I'm not saying surrounded by men was not good, but very different, very efficient, very respectful, very powerful. And it started in me um, the feeling that um, the, the music industry had been missing a lot without having women more in place, you know, because we, um, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to explain. So anyway, when um, the institution like SACEM, UNAC, asked me to... Um, to join, I said yes immediately, even though I was really not into institutions. And um, I started, um, as I said, being really shy, 
but I very soon embraced the whole thing and went and um, went to a lot of panels, lots of masterclass, lots of um, uh, workshops. And I realized also during COVID that there was a lot of um, association all over France of uh, young um, people mainly, led by women and by men, but young people don't have the same issues than us. It's more independent. They do what they want. They organize festival. And most important, they are federating each other into this energy. They feed each other with um, ideas, with, uh, you know, um, experiences that work. And they grow bigger and bigger. And I witnesses people, like young people talking, and I got very empowered by that. And I could um, tell uh, the SACEM, tell UNAC, uh, the women composer film alliance in France are young too, so they're very efficient. But all this together, we um, it created a real emulsion of uh, energy. Um, am I getting away from the topic? I don't know, but... Um, no, no. Uh, you know, I, I really... Okay. Because I come from really, I was just a, a, a composer and playing guitar. And suddenly in one year, I got really thrown into this. And I realized to myself, I was doing politics, but I, I don't want to be a politician. But I was the voice, I was the image of, uh, I, could, I could put people together. I could say things. I could give ideas that I saw that was working in this association. So... Um, I am very lucky and I realize it's also very nice to be sort of not old, but uh, more mature, let's say, because we have the experience and also I have the background to think what I knew, what I had been missing and not to incriminate the, um, the man world of rock music, but just to make my goal is to make sure highlighting the woman uh, input and to balance it better, to get to a better musical world, if you know what I mean. It's, um, I try mm. to always stay positive, not blame and things, because otherwise, you know, it's like uh, we need good news and we need good input to move forward. That's my, mm. my um, vision on things. And, um, and shall I leave the yeah, to Irina? I it's oh. beautiful. I, it's beautiful. I think what you say about being empowered by the community you entered and leading yes. this empowerment to a kind of voice yet that you gave to the yes. very same community. And in the next round, uh, the last round of my questions uh, to you, Delphine, I will. I would love to jump into your brain and your heart to ask you what exactly um, what exactly we can learn from you which kind of tools might work is it yes. to shout out loud is it to align is it to get together is it i have i have a few ideas <laughs> i will come back to you so yes, keep yes, them yes. i have a, i have answers a few answers you that's know. cruel <laughs> <laughs> irina up to you well um um delphine and rebecca told some some things that i can definitely rely um to um but um my motivation is basically the fact that uh, we are not equal. Some are more equal than, than the others. And now I'm going to switch from the topic of gender to the topic of uh, perspective to, to, to look at it today. And it's a legal one. Uh, the fact is, um, um, that um, many people who are not coming from EU countries while living in EU or, or, um, or in Great Britain or in Switzerland, they don't have um, um, the same um, perspective of work and they don't uh, share the same working conditions. Um, Article 10 of the European uh, Convention of Human Rights, freedom of, of expression of arts and culture is quite endangered because through visa permit procedures, the freedom of, um, of um, artistic expression is, is facing uh, growing, uh, growing pressure. And COVID had um, affected uh, the working conditions um, as well. Um, for example, uh, one example, um, um, to prolong your artistic visa, 
if you're not coming from EU, if you're coming from, from a third country, uh, you need to prove that your income is based on, your, on you practicing your art, how you're going to do that in COVID crisis. Um, so um, another um, example is, for example, if I decide to do a work of art, which is kind of like a Pussy Riot performance, if I take off my clothes somewhere and, and do um, a political art performance, then I'm going to be charged with a moral offense, indecency offense. Um, and uh, this is going to affect uh, my uh, my visa, or or if I decide to apply for a citi uh, for a citizenship of Austria, I'm not going to get it because uh, you know I was charged with something like that. So the the fact is, what does it make like if 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 you decide to do that the in in France? something like this, uh, um, a performance like this, um, then you're going to be charged with the same um, with the same thing, with the same moral offense, I guess, but it's not going to influence your stay in France and nobody is going to throw you out. And, and this is why we are not all um, equal. Um, uh, we tend, furthermore, um, uh, people not coming from EU countries, but working there, are, um, are uh, they tend to work more in, um, in service performance area, like entertainment, than, uh, than uh, being really brave because of uh, examples like this uh, to do political art. Um, so these um, things I was um, in cultural advisory of the city of Graz before I, um, I decided to involve myself in the migrants um, advisory council um, because uh, this uh, cultural participation, political participation, not being able to vote, not, not, not experiencing the same uh, working um, um, and life conditions is really influencing what you're what you're doing. Um, so I decided to do that um, because I'm scientifically dealing um, um, uh, with uh, work and production conditions of, of freelancing artists. Um, not coming from EU and coming from EU. So I have uh, um, I have decided to to involve myself in in in, in this whole thing. Uh, to give it more voice, to position um, these uh, themes in the society, and um, and also to uh, to raise this awareness. Um, as as Rebecca said, uh, this is this is a very important thing because if you don't have a period, you don't need a tampon. If you are not sitting in a wheelchair, you don't need um, some uh, some special vehicle. Um, to, to to move and so on and and if we learn how to uh, um, how to take these very very careful looks out of different perspectives what we might have and and don't share with others like if, if we take a look at it just globally um, music can be um, a death sentence in some countries um, still so um so this is what uh, what is basically my motivation um to to make this better if i can and, and there is one more crucial thing like when i see at this media and political language regarding art but regarding also migration um i'm i'm, I'm quite sick of it because it's uh, yeah, these wars are um are are kind of on the back of the culture. It's always about culture. And, um, and this is what I would like to raise awareness for as well. So for this diversity that we, of, of course we have it, like uh, if, if we do music or if we do art, um, it's a good thing to, um, uh, the, be the beauty lies in diversity. And of course you work with different people from different countries and you're influenced, uh, different music uh, influenced you and, and so on and so on. But um, the world is not uh, our, our village most of the time. So we are sometimes closed in this uh, um, uh, diversity bubble, which is, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not also so developed in gender um, terms, but as far as uh, the mixing of, of different music, different world music is uh, um, um, is concerned, uh, it is. Um, so these are kind of my my, my crucial motivations, uh, mm -hmm. perspectives, 
um, awareness and <laughs> fight. Mm. And you use beautiful images, the wheelchair and the wheel and the tampon. Thank you. <laughs> I never have thought about this image. Uh, but uh, one sentence is so important. I think many sentences are so important that you mentioned, but we are not all equal. I think that's the, the basic line that uh, we understand when we speak to each other. We are not all equal and we are not sharing the same privileges. And often we are not aware of those that have many privileges, that they have these privileges that they have. It starts physically, it's well-being, culturally, economically, legally. It has so many dimensions, eh? the inequality, but also the privilege on the other side that we take in a way for granted until we need something else and we face a situation in which we are aware, oof, I was so privileged and now I'm not anymore. And sometimes I'm very sad that we need these kind of bouncing moments in which we only become aware of these privileges that we have and we are not extending them to a larger group of people as much as we can, as long as we have them. And uh, we are just taking them for granted and rather defend them and not give them to others. So one important task I think for, for me has always been in life to extend these uh, opportunities to others that I take for granted and I have because I have certain privileges I, I'm, I'm very aware of. So awareness and sharing awareness and moving from awareness to political action and to action as such to communication and to sharing. This is what we do here, I think, in this room. So thanks. Thanks for that, Irina. Rebecca, I think Irina used a nice starting point, the motivation on the one hand and what she does with that motivation on the other hand. Do you want to Pick on that and share your story. Yeah, I found it really interesting, and um, yeah, it's lovely sharing this panel with you. And I am um, I can relate to you women so much, so it's really nice being with like-minded people. Um, and it's interesting what you say, Irina, about um, politics and art, and actually, in a way, as musicians and creatives. A lot of us, we have this passionate care for people, don't we? As in, we don't know where it comes from, but we care and we want to express it through our music. It's just part of who we are. Um, and what's interesting is we do it, we express it through our music. And it's nice that we're doing what we're doing now, because actually what I learned in the last two years is using your voice, as in speaking up, is so powerful. Um, and actually especially in the music industry I think there's a fear or there definitely was a fear for me um because of the lack of diversity and the power issues that meet the music industry has you know you don't want to um offend someone in case you don't get booked for that job or you you lose that deal etc um but what I've found really amazing over the last few years is I've learned that through using my voice and through other women and other men and people speaking up, how it has a ripple effect. Like quite literally, I, I'm just watching it. Like one person will speak up for more diversity and inclusion. And then you'll just see it ripple through companies or people might see it online. Or And then you don't realize basically what I'm trying to say is we don't realize how powerful we are. Um, and sometimes you can feel um like you're weak or helpless and it's really hard watching injustices generally in the world and inequalities and we can feel like oh well what what, what are we going to do I'm not powerful I'm not and yet we are and even what we're doing right now collectively the impact that we can all have the networks that we all have the people that we know and um, how we can then share those networks and communicate with each other um yeah that that's what motivates me really is wanting to create a better society and maybe because I'm a mother I don't know but I think I just think how would I want the industry to look in 10 20 years would I be happy for my children to enter it if I'm honest right at this moment now but in 10 years yeah definitely and I think it all comes from us working together to try and create an industry that feels safe and inclusive um but inclusive in a way where we also allow people to express their views I think there's a culture at the minute now where if someone has an opposing view we we cancel them or and and in a way 
we're not allowing freedom of thought, expression, or allowing, um, uh, how can I put it, people a chance to change their point of view because they're instantly um, demonised for their views. And I'd love to see a, a music industry and a society that um, is more accepting of differences, um, more open to hearing, hearing other people's opinions. And I think with a more diverse um, music industry as well as that, we're going to get better ideas, you're going to get better creativity. At the minute, I think the music industry especially at the top level so we're talking CEO level it all looks the same well to me from my perspective and from my experience anyway and it'd just be lovely if in 10 years time if we all work hard together to see that a lot more diverse you know just just a more diverse working group so then these issues we don't have to have these meetings because it's kind of known within the community that we all we all get on, we all have an understanding of each other, we all respect each other. Um, and again, my long-term goal would to be would be to have a standards authority that just overlooks just in case you know we get little issues that come up. Oh it's beautiful that you say that I, as far as I understand that every militant point of view closes our readiness to listen so it's not for the sake of inclusion and fight we we should close up uh, the readiness for us to listen to the diversity of things that are happening around us um, and i think that's very very important with all the heart and the minds we are fighting for something we need to stay uh, open with our ears and eyes eh, all the time it's it's very important what you say there I said before, I would come back in the last round before opening the floor to each of you here in the room, uh, to each of the three panelists for a last two minutes kind of thinking exercise. And I want to invite you to think of a concrete moment or of a practice or of a, of a suggestion based on a very concrete moment, emotionally or politically or whatever it is, that when you say this had an impact or this might have an impact, this weapon, this tool, this one thing that I experienced or that I would like to propose to this, to this group of people in terms of increasing awareness or improving conditions uh, uh, under the topic of inclusion for artists for, for the music industry. Delphine, two minutes, Irina and then Rebecca before we give the floor to each of you. I, I just wanted to bounce on um, what Rebecca said about one voice count, because I do uh, relate to this now after having do two years of, um, you know, being invested in the community, because uh, uh, the problem of women is that they felt very isolated back then. And now with everything that's happening, there's a real uh, one voice count. You're totally right. You know, everything. So that's that's a very beautiful so if I have to say one thing that really helped, uh, oh, I had a couple, but we did with us SM a transsectorial event, you say that in English, where we invited a lot of women um, from different cultural world, not only music, to come and present their um, topics, you know, um, in a, a sort of a little uh, workshop. And it was so important to hear uh, there was a politician, there was a podcaster, there was a woman in video games, there was a woman, uh, the best for me was um, uh, a university teacher that came with a PowerPoint to explain to us very precisely that women artists have disappeared from uh, school manuals in France. I don't know for other countries, but in France, if you go into a manual of a 12-year-old kid, you won't find any woman painter, composer, um, writer, maybe one, of course, but so there's no models for the teacher to stand on. Um, so we were all very shocked and we thought we have to call the Ministry of Education in France to reassess all the manuals because for me, education is prime. It's really the priority to change the society. And if in school, the kids don't have models and then she had another uh, incredible thing on her PowerPoint, little books for very little kids with images where the front is a little girl behind the window watching the little boys going outside playing lots of things like this where i realized i real my point is i realized we get more powerful if we um join all um 
um, you know, all our experiences, not only in the music, we have to be trans sectional and uh, gather together and federate all this energy and all this um, experience together to, to grow our community, our network and be more efficient. And if I have another minute, I will just say recently uh -huh. I did, um, I did um, a concert with, um, with a group um, of um, a woman um, community, author composers, and we decided to do a concert with only um, songs, hit songs composed by women, only women on stage and trans uh, generational. So the youngest was 12 years old, a young girl playing and singing, and the oldest was 80 years old, a woman called Arlette Couchounian who wrote the song called La Musique, which is super famous. And at the end of the show, they directed the two of them, 12 year old and 80 years old, they sang that song and it was a very beautiful moment of transmission. And the people in the audience, they were just watching with 12 women on stage and it was, quite a very happy, not threatening, not, you know what I mean? It was a very um, positive action that I hope will stay in people's mind. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, well, I, I think mm -hmm. I exceeded two minutes, but. <laughs> one minute from Irina. Mm -hmm. Can you do it in one? I'll try. I mean, basically what Delphine said about the education and women being present at all, um, then uh, I would say, um, what do I like to do? I pick up my fights, uh, strategically thinking, not, you know, fighting everything like uh, Don Quixote and, and connecting, connecting with each other, strong networks, building strong networks. And, and because uh, it, it moved me, what you said, uh, you are mother and you are mother and and you are a mother and I'm a mother, um, a recent mother. And it is, um, it is really going on my nerves. Um, we have a quite uh, desperate, a very, very backwarded uh, childcare system in Austria where you're supposed to sit at home. And for the artists, um, there is nothing during our working times. And, um, and also um, there are no many possibilities to... Um, to um, change that actively, you know, without investing a whole lot of uh, personal money uh, for it. So I started to make pressure about this. Uh, we started to do some um, actions in the city, like the Women's Action Forum is always uh, is always offering uh, childcare during uh, these uh, manifestations, events, uh, concerts, and uh, whatever we do. And also Frauenrat and some people from the university joined. So every single time somebody asks me to do something, which is after 5 p.m., um, I ask, uh, is there childcare uh, provided? Because I think this is a very important issue, which which is excluding us. Um, it is it is a very important issue. Also, if you want to tour for two years or something, it's very important um, because most of the time we pay it. And um, yeah, so this is I, I wanted just to, to to bring that in the game as well so this is what i do and as rebecca said we are we are strong we never know as musicians which kind of impact we're going to have like you you do it you create it and you you let it out and you don't know who is going to be touched by that and um over and over i'm su i'm surprised with this so um yeah let's not, let's not believe that we are not powerful <laughs> <laughs> yeah Choose your battles and also be patient and constructive probably in these situations. When, for instance, you, you ask after five, ah, would, would you have a daycare for my child as well? Maybe some people, I mean, in a naive way, haven't even thought about it. So it's a, it's a matter of yes. insisting and educating people. It's not per se a bad sign that there is no, no care uh, for the child, but it would be a bad sign that after 10 uh, times you are asking that still there would be no 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 care child. By the way, there is uh, on this topic of uh, motherhood, parenthood and mobility in the arts, a very nice podcast episode on the on, on the on the move web page just recently. I will put it here into the chat. It's it's nice to listen to by Hetty Judah, who's talking about that. Rebecca, which which uh, fight are you? I mean, which battle are you <laughs> choosing <laughs> to have an impact or to create an impact? One moment that you think of or that you suggest to us? Well, one, one moment that 
it's less of a moment and more of seeing a quote and I saw a quote that read fear is a lie and I pondered on it for a minute I was like what does that mean and it was fear is a lie and then I really started to think about it and what I what I realized was that um whilst we live in fear we are not living in love and when we're not living in love we're not helping our community so as in when we're living in fear we're scared to speak up we're scared to use our voice we're scared to fight for other people's rights but when we're living in love it kind of gets rid of the fear and um, so that was the that was quite a key moment for me just seeing that quote again how words lyrics have power how words have power and just seeing that kind of um spared me on but in terms of fight for me now it's about speaking for the voiceless and those that um have feel powerless and those that feel like they can't um because my experience in the music industry has been one of great power and I was I was here so they were here and I was here and I didn't have a seat at the table or a voice at the table to be able to stand up for myself um so my my fight at the minute is to just try and eliminate that gap so that everyone's held accountable um, and that there's no one that's so powerful that they can't be held to account should they mistreat people uh, within the music industry. So that's that's where I'm at at, at the minute. And um, let's let's see how it goes. So far, so good. The stuff that's happening in the UK is going really well. And um, we've got a lot of backing from um, the BBC, Sky, um, Netflix. And basically what they've all said, all these companies, is that they're going to pledge and sign up to the standards authority, which is great because that means they're saying we will we will apply these standards to our company. Um, and one the next thing for me is to make sure that that's within employment contracts as well. So those standards, fine, it's fine for you to sign up organizations, but the individuals that are working for you, not just individuals that are employed, but freelancers as well. You know, when you're getting people for freelance work which a lot of us are freelance workers you know they the employer will give you a thing to say these are the standards and this is how you're going to get treated this is the respect you're going to be given so that's where I'm at at the minute and again as I say it's accidental because actually I just wanted to be a singer and that's all I ever wanted to be but uh, life happens and it, 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 it moves you in different directions yeah oh beautiful Thank you three, Irina, Delphine and Rebecca, for your generous sharing of your paths, your lives, your concerns, your proposals. Um, Thank you. We have um, a couple of minutes now. I see, Irene, that you are raising your hand and I will give you the floor. I just want to remind us that following this panel now, we are going into three breakout groups. So we have a lot of space now to take all the foods and the thoughts that we got from our three panelists into these breakout groups and discuss in 30 to 40 minutes breakout groups more one-on-one -on -one different issues. Uh, they are chaired by Sarah Glennens, Sine Tofte Hannibal and Afke Romain. Um, and then after those breakout groups, we are going to come back here in plenary session. So don't uh, take just now the questions directly to Rebecca, Irina, Delphine or the comments and take all the rest into the breakout groups, I would suggest. Otherwise, we are passing too much time uh, and we and Tatiana is killing me for having uh, passed too much of that time and <laughs> taken away from the breakout groups. So, Irene. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you, Sarah Mani, for inviting me. Um, I am glad that EXA now finds the way towards also gender balance, because some years ago when I stayed in Brussels for a working meeting for a European project, there has no, uh, no, no special interest. Um, I did already one uh, European project, Cre Creative Europe, on Musica Femina, women in music, composing my field, I'm stressing composing, and I'm doing the next one now. It's called FAM, acronym is FAM. It is uh, also including migrants. It is including, including uh, handicapped, intellectually handicapped people. And it is including a digital knowledge hub, we call it, um, 
providing all the knowledge you have to know as a composer from copyright to value sharing to licensing how to get fundings um, and also a database i would like to I, for the first time, I would like to do research in databases and in platforms of women in music and, and look what's the problem, why there are so many platforms, but nothing goes on. Um, so what is the power of these platforms? What do they miss? Do they have budgets? What can they provide? And what have we to found? What, what, is, what, have, what is the next step to do? So I am interested if anybody of you um, this, uh, in this meeting is willing to uh, somehow make a bridge with us or to to uh, is interested in our program in in this project we are now um we are applying now in in february i think is the deadline yeah. um, maybe there is some uh, some connection and especially because eu always wants some sustainability oh. which is a kind of um it's difficult you you apply for a project but they want uh, sustainability but maybe we can manage that you are in in institutions you are in in platforms that are already existing and that will exist any longer so um may okay. i write where shall I write my email? I will write your email now, Irene, into the chat so people yes. can get in touch with you because yes. everybody, I think, can follow the chat. And then I'm sure you can provide more information to those getting interested. And I think use EXA and use the networks for distributing of those yeah. kinds of ideas, which are very interesting for others working on the same topics to share with, because EU applications are not a pleasure. <laughs> they need a lot of work and courage. <laughs> So it's a very generous invitation to all of you here. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, one last question, and then uh, Tatiana, you will explain us how we split up. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Just a, thank you, Kathleen. Just a very brief point, and thank you to all the panel. It was a fantastic conversation that also brought up a lot of issues that kind of go beyond the standard diversity topics that we have. So there's a lot of very concrete examples and very moving examples, and a lot to keep talking about. I just wanted to very briefly to say, Irena, please send your request to us or to the EXO office, Tatiana, I hope that that's okay for you, because then we can send it to the member organizations because you need European partners, it would be great. And great to see everyone here. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. With these constructive uh, comments and the invitation for the next steps, people can work on concretely on this EU application. Tatiana, how do we split up? Uh, so we will split in two breakout rooms. Um, Sine and Sara uh, will moderate uh, each room. Uh, you are all welcome to share thoughts, um, some good practices or some barriers that you had in your personal or professional life in connection to the topics. So, and then after 30 minutes, we will all come back to, to, to close the session. Cool. I think we are all back from our 30 minutes of not only chit chat, but I think important conversations that happened. Uh, and we would like just to sneak into your rooms for three minutes into the two rooms that we have and give the floor to Sarah and then to Sine to report, not to report in detail, but just maybe to share two, three impressions uh, of your room that are worth sharing with us and the entire group as well. Around three minutes, Sarah, you first. Okay, uh, thank good. you. We had a really good conversation. Um, when we discussed the first question, which was what does diversity and equity inclusion mean to you? Um, one of our contributors said it is the most important topic. I think this was, uh, this was really good to hear. Um, we are, you know, and learning how to include people who are coming to a new society, a new world. So if they're, you know, which can be anything, it can be, I guess, immigrating to a new place, but also could be moving across art forms or going to a new institution. Um, it was important to including, including, you know, all of the different areas that people are coming from diversity and then how that affects their ability to survive. So an example was given that um, when 
people were emigrating that they were finding it impossible to survive in composing so then moved to other areas of the art so um we got two excellent quotes it is important to make peace with difference from Sonia Ryan Taylor and listening is not agreeing so we talked quite a bit about listening and the important to actively listen to be aware of what your your mind's doing when trying to listen that you actually are listening not thinking about what you're going to talk about next or thinking about how you know how you're interpreting but just listening um and how important that is to to the act of discussion um and we also talked about access and rights uh, that access to knowledge access to knowing what is happening access um to um I suppose the un unwritten rules things that other people know about the the kind of I sometimes I call it uh, the the notions or rumors within an industry that people instinctively might know about because of their background but people arriving new to the area might not know about and how to ensure that there is equality of access to these things which are so important if you're surviving off funding or getting support um and that um it's it's basically diversity is our daily bread I like that as a quote as well and we have to deal with these issues and how to celebrate diversity as well really importantly that it's not seen just as a problem um and it means humanity and listening again and to, to take care of people so then when we went on to um, talking about the second question, what does it mean to you or what obstacles do you have? Um, I think there's there. what was really interesting to me is a lot of the obstacles came from and barriers came from from a um, something that you were given, the identity that you were given, that you arrive with, that you haven't even had an opportunity to understand yourself. So you're walking in and being considered and you know one of the examples might be in uh, your ethnicity so if you arrive with the with your ethnicity that people expect you to perform a particular type of music for this or to behave in a certain way or if you're a female that you would be expected to want to talk about children and you know clothes or or whatever and that as an artist it it means that you're trying to arrive in to do an art form and to connect with an audience but you already have all of these things that are, are kind of being put on you um the just the a barrier obviously is families um, and artists when they're married maybe to another artist a uh, lack of access to childcare, and again that equality of childcare. if you're not from a place you might not have the support of your wider family in the same way that other people do. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Just a, a lot around these kind of unspoken rules, invisible rules, um, not knowing how, how the person that you're supposed to be, people's expectations of you based on your physical or your cultural or your ethnic background. Um, and also finding community that shares your experience can be hard if you're from a different a place or or the, from whatever your diversity is that that if you you need to access that community so that you can kind of help each other interpret what's happening um, and linguistic issues like basic access is really about language a lot of knowledge comes from reading text so where are the obstacles within that? Um, and then what, what are the ideas to fix it? Um, uh, we got an excellent example from Norway. The first step they took was to do a survey and they had an 80% response rate, which was incredible because you need a really high response rate from your population in order to get valuable data via survey. So they really managed to get people on board. They um told their members that this was going to be a key focus for the organization um, and from that then they came to understand how people were feeling and became aware of how they of how they needed to address it from the survey and their findings they developed an action plan 
Um, and really key to this was the system for when things don't work. How do people report things? Um, and to ensure that they're doing this in a way that allows people to report things to different people if you know something that they're trying to report is about somebody else and you know how how crucial that is when you're working with a group of freelancers where you know you don't have the same systems or rights that employees would have I think I've covered a lot of it there Yes, there was Thank a you. lot. There was a lot said in these thirty minutes, and I'm glad that uh, Tatiana is recording the session because all these feedbacks, uh, I think, are always a mandate for the agenda to work on uh, and to do something with next to the platform of exchange in itself, which is a very valuable, uh, valuable thing. Thanks a lot, Sarah, and everyone. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I mean, we definitely uh, talked about some of the same things that you just uh, reported, Sarah. The the issue about working conditions was maybe the, the thing that we started off with. I mean, jumping, I would say, directly into question number two uh, and the obstacles. Um, and uh, I mean, in terms of, of uh, working conditions, both, both the thing about... Um, harassment, sexual harassment, uh, and uh, several in the group shared uh, info about uh, big surveys being done about, uh, if, I mean, in order to get really detailed information about what are the conditions actually, how many percentages uh, experience, uh, you know, to be forced uh, to, um, I mean, our experience in sexual harassment uh, in different ways. Um, Another uh, obstacle was this actually getting people to understand that being an artist is a real job. It's not just something you do for fun. Um, and a, a third one that we talked about was that uh, it's really one thing is, is, is getting all the data and all the knowledge, but another thing is actually uh, going below the numbers and look at the, date, the data in a more detailed way um, one in the group shared um, a project that she's working on at the moment, doing a podcast about sexism in orchestras. And, and as an example, this thing that maybe it looks like that you have a 50-50 balance, um, I mean, in the total group of musicians, but if you go into each of the, the instrument groups, you will not have, I mean, gender balance, and you will experience a lot of sexism that actually creates a very bad um, working environment. Um, so one, I think, crucial point in our discussions was that the one, I mean, really important thing that we need in order to work with, um, with the whole issue about uh, gender equality, diversity and inclusion, that is that we need both uh, hard facts but we also need stories. We need to tell the stories um, in different ways. Podcasts is one thing. You can have other formats. But because this, I mean, building trust with people and to tell their stories is, is a very powerful way of actually also creating a, a bigger visibility around the whole issue and make people understand where the obstacles and are, but also to understand what it means to be an artist and what it means to be um, either a, a woman or um, having experiences with minority issues as well. Um, we also talked about the really, I mean, the huge importance of taking responsibility where you are. Um, and also, especially if you are in a position of power, it's extremely important. To responsibility of what you do. Um, some of the group also shared, Mark shared a, just a recent study on female directors and screenwriters um, as one thing. I think it will be shared in, in, in the whole network as well. Um, uh, and yeah, also just the last thing, uh, last really um, good thing to do um, was also some in the group had good experience with these programs of uh, education, of further education, when it comes to actually change behavior and be more aware about what, how you 
prevent sexism and sexual harassment and how you create an inclusive in, uh, environment for everyone. Yeah, I think that was mm. just some of what we talked about. Thanks a lot, Sine. I think it's always so somehow touching how um, these kind of conversations, even on Zoom, can be so private somehow and so personal and so deep uh, in a way going into our lives our experiences and I think we have to thank you all for this generous sharing of your environments your concerns and your proposals which makes I think such an initiative exercise taking a very relevant platform for connection and for connectivity as a platform in itself and in a way also as a mandate to the network itself as well and Mark I think you have so fantastic people around the table and such a generosity and openness to speak and to share with each other that it must be a fulfilling job for you to take up this mandate and and do on your level the political work that needs to be done the lobbying work the work to to fight for the improvement of conditions for artists as such for musicians for composers for the working conditions and so many elements linked to that i think I mean, I'm empowered myself by listening to you and having attended this working group. And you must be very empowered as well. So over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Catherine. And thanks also to, to, to my colleagues who have organized uh, this, uh, this roundtable because I did not do much, I must, uh, I must confess. So thank you in particular to Tatiana. Uh, but also my other colleagues, uh, and also to all our uh, gender equality and diversity uh, group uh, for this. And um, and I hope we'll be able to do you know this again quite soon. And but we'll discuss that in our um, in our working group. And thank you so much, Catherine, for moderating so well as well. <laughs>